Well, thanks for the race, Sonic. I'll see you in cinemas. So guys, welcome back to Remove Before Race. And today is perhaps the most important modern AMG review that you are ever gonna watch. Now, while this car may just seem like another fast AMG saloon, this car actually unifies two separate worlds that have existed in AMG since the beginning of the company. One is the world of extremely fast and brutal family saloons, cars like the original AMG, the Red Pig, the infamous Hammer, and today's very famous E63S. And then the other world, which was completely different, of super sports cars, cars like the 300 SL, the SLS AMG, and today's AMG GT family. This car brings those two worlds together and fuses them into the first car that has the abilities of both. And that car is the AMG GT 63S. Today's episode of RBR is sponsored by Raycon wireless earbuds. So guys, we live in a wireless world and there's a lot of options for wireless earphones, especially the in-ear style. However, the ones from Raycon, these new E25s, are quite unique. First of all, they're only half the price of many other wireless premium earbuds on the market, but they sound just as good. Now, of course, you can answer your phone calls, listen to music, etc., and the sound is really good. But for me, the in-ear aspect is brilliant because I've tried all the recent massive brands and they just slip out of my ears. Maybe I've got weird ears, but the Raycon ones, let me show you how they fit and what it sounds like when you pop them in. Brilliant. The earbuds sit magnetically in the case and the case has a lovely satisfying click to it too. I love the fact they're black, I love the fact they fit me and that the sound quality is good and they're endorsed even by people like Snoop Dogg. So guys, if you want your own ones, you can get 15% off right now by going to buyraycon.com slash RBR. That's buyraycon.com slash RBR and you will get 15% off the latest earbuds from Raycon. Thank you for supporting our sponsors and now back to the episode. So guys, when I talk to you about fast AMG saloons, the first car that must come to mind is the E63F, the natural predator of the M5, a car that began with the likes of the 500E, which was actually a car that Porsche helped build, and then the infamous AMG Hammer, which was as quick as Ferraris and destroyed the M5 of its time. The modern one is no different. It has reset the rules upon its inception on the market. It's 612 brake horsepower with a switchable rear wheel drive and drift mode, which made the car famous. Of course, it's still powered by the four liter V8 by turbo as seen in most modern AMGs. And it is an absolute brutal car. So how do you improve upon what is already one of the prime super saloons in the world? Well, simply you make it the most powerful AMG that's ever created. And you bring in DNA from the beast of the green hell supercar flagship the AMG GTR, and that's exactly what AMG have done with the GT four door family. Now, what is the differences? Well, first of all, we talked about power, 640 brake horsepower. I think the most torque that an AMG has ever had and the quicker zero to 60 as well. That's more power than the SLS Black Series had. And it all goes to the formatic four wheel drive system, which also, as we said, like the E63, has the switchable drift mode as well. Now, power is the obvious one, but what about the stuff you can't see? For example, the body and white of this car. Yes, you've got steel and aluminium, but you've also got use of carbon fiber. Particularly interesting is the carbon fiber reinforced plastic within the middle and the rear boot structure. All of this helping to increase rigidity and reduce the weight of the car. We've also got use of aluminium shear panel under the front of the car, again, for rigidity and a whole host of other modifications done to this. Then one thing that's very obvious if you know GTR, and that is the active aerodynamics on the front. You can't miss the slats, just like in the AMG GTR, and they have the exact same function in this four door. And indeed, if you have a car without the aero package, you've got the active rear spoiler. Again, that works in an even more advanced way with more levels than even the two door has. One thing you appreciate whether you're driving hard or slow is the rear wheel steering. Again, straight out of the AMG GTR. We'll talk more about that aspect later. Apart from that, the width of the car, 
It's massive. It's as wide as the two-door larger GTs. We've got A, a wider body, and B, we've got wider tyres and wheel setup on this car. Again, differentiating it from E63. Another thing straight from GT two-door is the aerodynamics package. And that is different on the front end of the car, as you can see here. And of course, you've got the fixed rear spoiler as well. This is not just for show. A, it increases the downforce, and B, it increases the wind resistance of this car, making it, again, different to the E63S. Again, with the suspension, so much has been changed, and this car has been tested so heavily in that regard in order to make it unique for the GT four-door. So on the rear, just like the GTR, we've got a tubular anti-roll bar. All of those changes, what matters at the end of the day is how the car performs. And this car is the fastest four-seater on the ring with a time of 7.25. Guys, I need you to digest this for a second. That time makes this car as fast as the SLS Black Series, as fast as the Ferrari Enzo. I told you, this thing is the Hyper Saloon. And please do not cite to me the Jaguar Project 8 with its roll cage and entire track setup. This is a two-ton family saloon. Thank you, Sonic. Now, to me, the design also melds together the worlds of both the two-door and the four-door AMGs. You've got the same bonnet bulges. You've got the exact same headlights. You've got the exact same grille. You've got front intakes that are even more aggressive than the two-door. The roof line is taking inspiration from the most sporty Mercedes saloons of all time, which is of course the CLS, but that kink in the roof line is GT two door. The rear is absolutely unmistakably AMG GT. The lights exactly like the two door. Now the rear pipes, now that they've all matched in terms of design, exactly like the two door and the diffuser. And of course you've got the fixed wing with the aero package, the look and the presence that it has on the road, thanks to that wide body, but thanks to how low it sits in sports plus and race mode on its suspension just gives it a look like nothing else. And it's exactly what a customer like me expects from the flagship AMG GT four door. To me, I think the exterior design is nigh on perfect. The only thing I would have liked to have seen perhaps is something more real in terms of this wing over here and maybe some more exciting side sills. But really, it's a fantastic looking car and it really is a four door GT to me. Now we've seen a lot of different styles of GT four door. I just want to show you some of the specs that you can get so first of all, I want to show you what a normal Magno Blue car looks like without the wing. So this is a completely different look. It's a bit more standard AMG GTS with the rear spoiler. It's a bit more Porsche Panamera, I guess, a bit more CLS and a bit more easy to digest for some. I prefer the Aeropack version. It's very aggressive. You've got the adjustable wing on the rear, which I have adjusted to make higher as well. And talking about spec, one cannot forget about the Edition 1. Now this is no longer available from you. It was a limited production car for the first few months of the GT63S. And you can see we've got a very much a Batman spec going on in this car. It is Magno Graphite Grey, which is essentially a matte black and it was only available in that color. You get the typical edition one racing stripes on the car. Aero package comes as standard as well. And you get a very nice, unique two-tone alloy wheel multi-spoke here, which is in a satin finish on the silver. You also get night package as standard on this car, which is unavailable on all other GT63s, and I had to do it myself with Rock Studio. So again, making this car unique, you've got the black tips as well on the rear. But I think the, for me, the highlight of this edition one is inside, which I'm gonna show you later. Generally, which one do you guys prefer? I wanted to spec my car in my own way, but I really, really loved the look of the edition one as well. For me, if it had black wheels, it would have been the perfect AMG or at least near perfect in the stealthy Batman spec. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now there are other versions of the GT four door as well. Now this is the GT 63 S and I've shown you the edition one, but there's also a GT 63, which has less power, 585 brake horsepower in that one. And you can spot those cars from the standard red calipers rather than the yellow ones. Apart from that, we've also got a GT 43 and a 53. I know what you guys are thinking, and I kind of mirror what you think as well. Let me get to that in a second. So these cars use the same engine tune as the E53. So we're talking that three liter inline six engine. In the 43, you get 367 brake horsepower. And in the 53, you get 435. And both of them get EQ boost through the EQ boost starter alternator, giving a bit more power on top, just like in the other 53 cars. These cars have the standard AMG ride control suspension rather than the plus and a host of other changes. You can get a V8 optics pack 
which kind of pisses everybody off because then you get the look of the V8. But some countries get really heavily taxed and penalized for V8s and cars with really large engines. So I've been talking to customers in those territories and these cars are an absolute godsend because having sat in them and driven them, they're so similar to the 63s in the way that the cars drive, the way that they sound. I was so impressed when I sat in these cars. I can't wait to get one of them on the channel and actually show you guys because I was totally against them. But they're quite surprising. They give you a lot of the feel of the GT4 door and I'm glad they're around. Now there is one other version of this car, one super exciting one that I cannot wait to be released. It may be called the GT73 and it's an 800 horsepower monster that pairs the V8 from this GT63 with an EQ Power Plus hybrid system with electric motors that is said, as I said, to produce 800 brake horsepower, probably a zero to 60 of under three seconds. God knows how much torque. Oh, I cannot wait for this car. Now, some things I'm hoping, I'm hoping A, it looks a bit different. I want different fascia, different exhaust setup, something that makes this car stand apart from the GT63S and the rest of the GT four door family. Secondly, they really should call it the, Z the GT73. If they give it some GT63E or some other derivative, it will ruin it for me. Yes, it's a small thing, but I think it's really, really important. AMG shared a little teaser of this car in their thank you to their staff members recently in a video. We all saw it, we're all super hyped about it. I cannot wait for this AMG, bring it on. Now guys, I've spent many, many miles in this car, 10,000 in fact, so we've got a lot to talk about. So let's jump in the car and talk about my experience with the GT4 door. So 10,000 miles down, there's a lot that I've learned about the car, there's a lot of things I love, a lot of things I don't like as much, and I wanna share those all with you now. And funnily enough, the first thing I really love starts at the back of the car. The first thing I absolutely love has to be the boot space of this car. Because it's not a traditional saloon and it is a hatchback, you get all of this space then you can pull off the separator, you get even more space and folding seats. It's a two seat GT again. So much space in this, so useful. And I really found that when I was going to a Falterbach as well. So already even more practical than an E-Class. And it's not just that, you look at the actual space that you get inside of the car, both for the front passengers and especially the rear ones, it's really spacious for family. Now, I did the road trip to a Falterbach AMG in this car, a round trip, and it was brilliant for having the family in. And we had like car seats, we had an actual baby in the back as well. And this car just chewed up luggage and humans and we all went in such comfort, it was brilliant. But the main thing that I loved specifically about the interior of this car has to be how similar it is if you are familiar with the GT2 door. And I want to show you some views, specifically, of course, the center console, but just generally the feeling you get as the driver, not having the stalk up here, having the gear selector here, where in my opinion, should always be. You've got, of course, the updated center console, just like all the two doors have now, like in my GTR Pro, similar steering wheel, etc. And the whole ambiance, very similar to that. What I don't like is the fact that you've got the taxi E-Class front dash, exactly the same as any taxi in Stuttgart which is very frustrating. You know, they just changed the structure of this to be unique for the GT4 door. It would mean a lot to the customers paying that much more. And while I love the center console, I hate the fact that when you put your phone in it to charge it, it's so far back that you've just lost your phone for the entirety of the trip, which for some people might be a good thing. And then the cup holders, if we get a cup and we chuck it in there, it gets lost, it's so deep in there. And that's really not useful when you want to pull the drink in and out that's got actual fluid in it. So yeah, I don't like how deep that is. But I love the steering wheel, specifically this carbon steering wheel that you get internationally, you don't get in the UK, but I got mine from Rock Studio. You guys can as well. I will leave a link down below. It's brilliant. You've got Dynamica, you've got gloss carbon. It matches the rest of the interior finish. Then I love the AMG control units. Once you get used to these, it's so tough to drive an AMG that doesn't have them. You can switch things on the go. You can switch your modes, your exhaust, your suspension, manual, etc. Everything is there. You don't need to mess around with this lovely looking center console. Then I love the displays as well, the AMG specific ones like the Supersport, etc. But I hate the fact that you can get the exact same display. In fact, an even better one in the GLB 35. It's like, why couldn't you guys just give us a unique one? Even if it's like a different color palette, make something unique for your 150 grand five seat saloon. 
Indeed, the whole system is the previous E-Class system as well, so you don't get MBUX, another thing I don't like. However, I really like this touch pad. I really didn't think I would. It's really easy to use. It's better than the old iDrive type control knob. And you've got Apple CarPlay, which then negates the whole MBUX thing for me, because I think Apple CarPlay is brilliant where you've got Waze and Google Maps, etc., and you can talk to Siri. So six or one, half a dozen of the other on that side. Now that whole feeling of two-door GT is accentuated even more if you were lucky enough to get the Edition 1. Now how's this for a completely different ambiance in the car? Now if you've seen GTR, you're going to have deja vu when you look at the entirety of the interior of this car. You've got black Nappa leather, black Dynamica, yellow stitching, everything tying in to just what you see in the GTR and the GTR Pro. We've even got matte carbon fibre as we had in the E63 Edition 1. We've got in interior night package on the Dynamica stitch steering wheel with the yellow 12 o'clock marker. And of course you cannot ignore the seat belts with A, the lovely GT yellow seat belts, which you only get in the GT family and the full performance seats, the AMG bucket seats, again, as you get in all the other cars as well. These feel very different to the ones in mine. They're a lot more enloping in the way that they hold you. And I've always said these are as comfortable as the standard seats. I went for the standard ones because you can only get driving assistance, drive pilot with those seats for some absolutely weird reason. But looks wise and everything, I really like these. I always have ever since they start in the original A45. Now, one other interesting thing about this edition one is that it has the two seat rear option instead. And you can see that again has seats that hold the rear passengers more with larger side bolsters. And we've got the middle section with USBs and a cup holder as well. I prefer the bench on the rear but this looks quite nice in especially the way the seats are more carved out. I really like the touch of the unique floor mats in this as well. So yeah, the addition one, as it always should be, looking very different and very special in the GT63S. The other thing that I absolutely love and I can't live without in any car now is driving assistance package or drive pilot. And I especially found that when going to Germany and back or any motorway driving where the car is just either driving itself or it's changing lane itself. And it's just absolutely brilliant. Now, one other trick that I found and I want to show you guys was thanks to mbworld.org forums, the great community over there. Now, tell me if you've ever been in this position when you get in your car. I like to call it petite wife position, where you sit in the car, barely getting in, and you're essentially shagging the steering wheel. In the past, you'd have to hold down this button until it goes back into position, and you could probably make a cup of tea while that's happening. But you don't need to do that in the newer Mercs. Now, just one long, hard press, and the car actually moves the seat itself. Thank you so much, MB World Forums, for showing me that absolutely brilliant trick. Now, guys, the two things that I love the most after living with the car have to be, first, the tyres. Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, PS4S is on this car. Absolutely incredible on the dry, in the wet, and durability. I've done 10,000 miles of hard driving all the way to a fault of and back, drag races, racing at RBR Studio, as you will see, and I'm still at like four or five mil. They're brilliant, they're absolutely brilliant. I hate the fact that the formatic cars in the UK still have the crabbing issue when cold, that is what it is. Be aware of that when buying these cars. And the last thing that I absolutely love is how the car is just getting louder and louder. I love the AMG Emotion Start. I wanna show you what this car sounds like. Every day it's getting louder. I think it's just blasting out all the shit parts of the exhaust as the car gets hotter and hotter. So, AMG Emotion Start. Button, hold the paddle, and listen to the music. Flawless, every time you get a beautiful and perfect startup. Let's go straight into race mode. What? It's like nigh on AMG GTR. Absolutely mind blowing. Now, I've got another party trick to show you. So let's head to the RBR studio. Why is it great that it can do this? Because every single AMG from the outset was always a rear wheel drive car. And it's only a recent innovation that the saloons and the 4x4s came into the mix with the Formatic system. So historically, AMGs were rear wheel drive. 
Plus, because it's AMG GT family, like the two-door, it's really got to have that, hasn't it? You can't escape that fact. But is anyone who owns this car really ever going to use it? I would submit that's not the case. It's a bit of a case of top trumps where you check the box that, yes, it can do the whole drift thing with a drift mode. Very impressive, very, very fun. But at the end of the day, not something that you're going to see every single day. What's more clever is the completely variable formatted systems. When I say completely variable, even when you don't have drift mode activated and you've got all the systems on, most of the time the car is rear wheel drive and only really brings in the front when you need it. And it's very nicely displayed here on this dynamic dial here, where you can see the arrows on the rear wheels. So most of the time the car feels like a rear wheel drive AMG while maintaining the safety that you want from a four wheel drive car. And that really hits the nail on the head for the GT4 door specifically because this car is all about breadth of ability. Now let's talk about the handling, okay? I'm in race mode, so suspension is in the stiffest setting. Everything's dialed up on AMG Dynamics as well, so we are in the master setting. And the car, the way it shrinks around you, the stiffness and all that rigidity that AMG added, you'd feel, looking at this car, that it is an S-class size car. It's gonna wallow around, it's gonna roll, but this car is so planted on the road. Wow! Lots of the time we talk about cars, how they kind of shrink as you're going faster, and the GT4 door, oh, it must be the king of that, because it doesn't feel like you're driving an S-class size saloon on this track here. It feels like you're driving a C63S or even an AMG GT. The steering is phenomenal on AMG's variable electronic rack. It's really, really precise. The other thing that you just cannot discount on a big car like this is the rear wheel steer, especially on these kind of corners. Yes, it's not the three degrees you get in the GTR, but you still feel it. So on these smaller corners, the wheelbase of the car feels like it shrinks. But if you're turning at high speeds on a motorway, it feels like the car is longer, giving you even more stability. It's really clever. We drove the Pro here not long ago. I promise you, in real world usage, different weather conditions, this car will catch the GTR up. It feels maniacally fast, so agile given its size. It's just an absolute blast to drive. Particularly then versus P63S, you feel how much more stiff and how much more rigid this car is in comparison. You feel the rear wheel steer, you feel that extra horsepower from this car. All of those changes that we discussed in the walk around, they're not hidden in the background. They are very, very much at the forefront of the experience for the GT4 door. And I think for me, that's when I understand just how dominant it is on the track, why it's the same speed as the SLS Black Series, the Enzo, etc. that we went over. It's on these kind of roads, and to be honest, even in everyday driving, that you see the brilliance of the GT4 door. Then you talk power, 640 brake horsepower. I commented when I drove the GTR Pro on these roads that, yeah, it's fast, didn't feel anything as fast as PT2 RS. This car's not in that category. It is very bloody fast and scary. Now, we must talk about speed. I've got track pace on. I want to show you what this car does, zero to 16. Race mode. Boom, there you go. 3.2 seconds, zero to 60. I told you, it's an absolute monster, and you can save that here in track base. And this form of power, so addictive, formatic, 640 brake, 900 newton meters of torque. You can just use it all day, every day. You giggle every time you use it. Listen to the sound there. This car sounds brilliant. I really want to show you just what it sounds like, so. That's just the pops and bangs element. You've heard the emotion start. You've seen what it's like when we're going really fast around corners. The bangs just add to it. And it sounds brilliant. And this has got an OPF, GPF, whatever inside of it. AMG know how to do good sound. That's why I'm gonna give them a chance on that four cylinder C63. Just because of their track record. No other reason. So that's one side of the GT63S. Insane power, drift mode, 
handling capability and a car that almost scares me as much as the GT2 RS. Not as much though. Let's hope the Black Series can. That was the sports car side, the SLS side, the GT side, the 300 SL side. Comfort mode, the suspension is rising now. I'll leave the exhaust on because I just don't do that. This is now like an S-Class, okay? I'm gonna go in shortcuts here. I'm gonna turn on driver massage seat. Perfect. Heated massage is on now. I think I'll maybe put on um, drive pilot as well and let the car drive itself. Drive pilot is on. Oh, I think I'll just take a bit of a nap. Okay, no, seriously, I better drive. But that is one side of the car. It's got all the technology that you can get in the current S-Class anyway. But tech's not what I'm interested in when it comes to breath of ability. All Mercs have good tech. What I'm talking about is how good the AMG Ride Control Plus suspension is just for daily driving. I'm talking about dealing with huge speed bumps that I've had to deal with through London, through countrysides, up to Germany and back. Everything that has been thrown at this car, it's chewed it up like a luxury Mercedes-Benz saloon. And right now, it's massaging the bum as well. But that's why it's been such a hit with my family because normally they've had to deal with cars that I love driving, which are normally dynamic cars like, like C63, C63 Black, even E63 feels harsher than this. Whereas this car allows me to have my fun and allows them to sit in the car and enjoy themselves as well in a very comfortable environment. But cards on the table to me, this is the most awesome car that AMG have made in modern history. I think it's gonna go down as the sweet spot that in the future you look at it and it's gonna be the peak of that company. Really guys, this is the most capable AMG ever. I mean, to go from that S-Class feeling Put it into race mode, and you've got this rigid, stiff, super hyper saloon at your fingertips that can chase down all manner of supercars, be it in a straight line or in a track, and look like an absolute beast while doing it. Is it that not the essence of AMG? And they've never had that product. They've never had the one that merges the history of that 300 SL with the brutality of the hammer in one package. And that I present to you guys, the GT63S. And that was the first thought I left you with. I want it to be the final thought that I leave you with. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And here I go one more time.